This is the next Dock 2. It will turn your smartphone into a laptop. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Next Dock reached out to me to see if I wanted to check out their Next Dock 2. So right now, this is currently out of stock, but they will be coming out with a brand new touchscreen edition later this year. So today I'm gonna check this out and show you everything that it can do. So first, let's start by taking a look at what's inside the box. So here inside the box, first we have the quick start guide. Now there are a few different ways in which you can use the next dock. Now one is you can use it with a smartphone. So it talks about how you can plug it into the port and you can plug in the charging port to use that. Next, it talks about how you could use it with a Raspberry Pi. So you can plug in an HDMI and then it comes with a USB-C splitter so that you can split that and plug it into the computer. And then here you also have the option for a Raspberry Pi 4. So today we're gonna mainly focus on using it with your smartphone and what capabilities it has there. So here inside the box, you do have a 60 watt USB-C charger with a 1.8 meter cable. So it's really nice that it comes with a really big cable. Here you have a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. Here we have a micro USB to USB adapter. And then here you have different um, adapters for um, different countries. So those are all the ports that it comes with. Here we have a USB-C to USB-C. So we're gonna mainly use that today. And then here we have that USB-C to uh, USB and micro USB um, that you can use with the Raspberry Pi. And then it also does come with this little HDMI cable um, that we'll use as well. So here we're gonna pull out the next dock. And so here is the next dock too. Now again, this is not a full laptop. This is really a laptop shell and you need another device to be able to actually use this as a computer like my Samsung phone, a Huawei phone, I guess even some new LG devices or a Raspberry Pi or something like that to be able to plug into this. Um, first, let's check out the port. So over here on the right side, we have three ports. We have a micro SD, we have a headphone jack, which is really nice because most phones these days don't have those. And then we have a full USB-A right there that you can plug in. And then on the other side here, we have an HDMI in. Then we have the charging port for the charger. Here we have a USB-C port, and then we have a USB-C in port. So that's where you're gonna plug in your mobile device. Now let's take a look inside the next book too. So again, 13.3 inch screen. Up here at the top, you have a function row, as well as the F1 to F12. Over here on the side, you have home and page up, page down. So it's nice, there's room for those. And then next you have the next dock button. So instead of like a Windows key or instead of the Google Assistant button, you have that option right there and that's super useful. And then down here, you do have a touchpad. So you have a left and a right click down here at the bottom. Now I found that the click isn't very far up. Maybe you just gotta push a little bit harder on the sides here. But you do have the option to tap on different things and so it works pretty well. There's also a backlit keyboard. You just need to turn this on with the function five key and uh, you can turn it off. No brightness setting there. So now let's go ahead and connect our device so that we can use the next dock. To power on the next dock too, all you need to do is hold down the power key right here. That will then power it on and you'll get this notice here that it says next dock is ready to connect. If it doesn't find anything to connect to, it will automatically go into power saving mode. So before we get into Samsung DeX, let me show you um, that you can use the HDMI port on here to plug in pretty much anything. So here I can plug in the Chromecast that I have here. And here you can see it instantly goes to the Chromecast screen and it's showing my family room Chromecast, the time. And so I could use this to play anything I want on the next dock. So you don't need to have a phone that supports this capability. You could just plug in any HDMI device and use this as a screen. With the Chromecast, there is no changing the volume or anything like that, but it's a great quality portable screen that you have as well. So next, let's talk about the main way in which I've been using to power the next dock too. So here I have my Galaxy S20 Ultra and inside the S20 Ultra and many other Samsung devices, 
is a software called Samsung Dex. So Samsung Dex allows you to use your phone in a more desktop-like interface on something here like the Nex Dock 2. Now previously, I've used a ton of different devices to power Samsung Dex. So usually this is a dongle that you would use and plug it into a monitor, or here I had a portable screen that I would use, and then you would need to have a keyboard and a mouse to get everything working on Dex. So you can see it takes a lot of work to get Dex working, but here with the Nex Dock 2, all I need is to have a USB-C cable, plugged into my Galaxy S20 Ultra, and then plug in the USB-C cable into the Next Dock 2, and power it on. And without any extra steps, I don't need to add a keyboard, I don't need to add a mouse or add a screen, it is able to turn on Samsung Dex. And so here you can see I have this new desktop interface where I'm still running my phone right here, and you can see my phone is still working, but I have this other operable a window where I can use my applications from my phone on a much bigger screen. So if you've seen any of my Samsung Dex videos, you know what that's all about. Well, today we're gonna go through some of the main things that I want to use Samsung Dex for and some of the powerful things that you can actually do when you are plugged into Samsung Dex. So as you can see, this interface is unique to Samsung Dex. So I didn't reorganize any of this on my phone. Whenever I'm plugged into Samsung Dex, that's where I have this interface that I can use and change and adjust things as needed. So the first thing that's really cool about the Next Dock is here if I press that Next Dock button, it's going to jump right into the app section and then I can just start typing to search for an app. So here if I wanna find my messages application, just type in messages and there I can open up my messages. And so here I have it where it's in this pop-up window and I can click and drag and move it around. One of the brand new things that you can now do on Dex is you can drag it over here to the side and it will automatically orient to that half of the screen. If I want to open up another application, let's say I open the Play Store here and I wanna navigate this to this side of the screen, I can just click and drag and then it goes on half the screen, which is really nice. Over here, I then have the option to go full screen and then I can also minimize it back down again right there. So Samsung Dex is continually getting more useful as time goes on and it's just really handy to have the option to have all of your apps right here on the screen. I don't need to keep picking up my phone. I can just open that application right here and use that app. So I've had a really awesome experience using the Nextbook 2 to interact with Samsung Dex because it has everything right here. I don't need to go and get all those different devices. I just plug in my phone like this. While I'm plugged in, it's actually charging my phone to keep it powered, and then it's using the battery here in the next dock. So if I wanna check the battery, I can select function and the F1 key, and there you can see I'm at 20% battery. So I use this for quite a few hours um, the other day and a few hours yesterday, and I'm still at 20%. So I'm not exactly sure on the amount of time you're gonna be able to use this for, but so far I've been overall impressed with how long the battery will last on it. I've only charged it up once and um, it's done really well. Now, if I want to adjust some other things, so if I wanted to adjust the volume here, I can press function, and then here I have the volume control. Now I do wanna mention that you can adjust the volume in two different ways. So if I come over here to Dex, now as you can see, it's kinda of hard sometimes to click on something. I'll go to click on it, and then I'll try and click the button on the keypad, and it ends up moving it out of the way. Now the easiest way to solve that is to pick up a Bluetooth or a USB mouse, and you can just plug it into the next book. So for this demo, I'm gonna be using this mouse just because it makes navigating decks a lot easier. So I can come down here, I can go into um, all my apps, I can go menu, and then I can go to the Samsung Deck settings. And then under here, you have the option to play sound on connected display. So you could just use your phone to play the sound. Maybe you have Bluetooth headphones, you wanna play through there. You don't have to change anything. But here, I wanna play the sound through the speakers on the next dock. It actually has four one watt speakers and you can play sound through here. So let's go head back into YouTube and listen to that video. So here, we're listening to it on the next dock. Now you do have two ways to change the volume. One is I can adjust the volume on my phone, and then I can come in here and adjust the volume 
on the next dock as well. So if it's not very loud, you can come in here and adjust that and then you do have the mute option as well. So you can choose whatever you want to have play volume, your phone or Samsung decks here. Let's close that out. Now the next thing you might want to use Samsung decks for is to be able to type a lot. And so if I come in here to Google Docs, you have the option to just start using Google Docs just like you're used to. Here we can click plus and then here we can select new document. And I did notice that um, when I type, let's see if we can get to do it here. Okay, so it didn't happen there, but sometimes when I have typed on the next doc two, I'll accidentally tap the touchpad and is what will happen is we'll end up selecting a lot of the text and then I push another letter and it ends up deleting the text. Now you do have the option to control Z so you can undo if you do make a mistake. So to solve that issue, if you are having that problem of accidentally touching the touchpad, I reached out to NextDoc and they said if you hold down the function and press the escape key, it will then turn off the touchpad. So here I have it on, function escape, you can see a light turned on right here and now I can't use the touchpad. So I actually found that to be really useful if I was already using a mouse, I didn't want to accidentally touch the touchpad. That kind of solved actually all the problems I had um, while using the next dock. I didn't have any other problems related to Samsung decks um, when using the next dock other than it would sometimes use the touchpad to touch on things that I didn't want to. So turning that off really solved all of that problem. Now I do wish that maybe there was some dedicated buttons on the touchpad so I could push the left or right mouse and that would solve a lot of the issues I've had where it automatically was moving when I try to click on something. So um, here I'll try to click and it will end up going this way or I just can't push the buttons as much. Um, but you also have the option to tap. So if I wanna select something, I can just double tap or I could just tap once on the touchpad. So it does have a functional touchpad. I just had some issues, so it's nice that it has the option to disable the touchpad. So here on the website, I did wanna mention that right now it says it's out of stock. It costs $249, but again, there will be another version coming out that you can pre-order right now. It says it's gonna be $249 and it has a touchscreen. That is the one thing about Dex is because it's based off of your smartphone, there are a lot of times when I wanna just come up here and touch, but the next dock 2 doesn't support the touch screen. So I really am excited for that model to come out because it pretty much has everything I want and having that included touch screen will just be really nice to have. Now, one other thing that I want to use Samsung Dex for is to edit videos. Now, previously, if you want to use a Chromebook or something, there's really not a great option to edit your videos. Well, over the years, Adobe has now come out with what is called Adobe Rush. So Adobe Rush allows you to edit pretty great videos right on your phone, and they have now added Samsung Deck support. So you can come in here, and there is a nice full interface that is really easy to use. So let's come in here to one of the projects that I edited a video on. I can scroll through. Okay, still has some errors. So I can come in here, let's see through. Okay, so still not perfect. Let's try this one. This one I know I have downloaded on my device, so I can scrub through. I recently came into a new office, so here you can see me painting and all this stuff, so I could go through and edit my video like normal. Now, like you just saw, I've had some issues where it just crashes or restarts, um, but I think if you just are doing smaller projects right here within Samsung Dex on Adobe Rush, you shouldn't have any issues. And you have tons of options where you can add transitions and um, you can add little effects or crop video and you have a lot of different options here in Adobe Rush. So I'm gonna play with that more, but it definitely is capable to edit video here on Samsung Dex. So now one of the things that I've been doing lately is playing a lot of Google Stadia. So if I come in here and type in Stadia, let's try out using Stadia here on the next doc. So if you want to use Stadia on your phone, you do need to have a Stadia controller that you plug in over the USB-C, or you need to have a Bluetooth controller. Well, I actually don't have a Bluetooth controller right now that I want to use um, with this. All the controllers I have are really old. So I wanted to figure out if there's a way to play Stadia with the Stadia controller. 
So if you come up here to the link options in the Stadia app, there is actually no way to link a controller over Wi-Fi using the phone. So in order to solve that, all I did, let's close this app, go into Chrome, and I went to stadia.com, and you'll get this error saying you need to play on a computer. Well, if you are in Chrome and I select menu here, I then can select desktop site, and now it runs the full stadia.com. So here I can play this game. If I use the controller right now, it's not actively working. So I just need to select the controller icon. And then here it's gonna give me a code to type in. Now it's going to link my controller to stadia.com. There you can see it linked. Now I can scroll around and navigate with the controller. And then here I have the option to select the game. And now I can play the game right here on the Stadia controller. So one thing I found is I kept receiving this error. Your mouse is currently not captured by the game. Please click anywhere to lock your cursor. So if I do that, nothing actually happens. One way to remove this is I can click the Stadia button here on the controller two times. So it's gonna open that up, press it again, and it goes away and then I can play. So let's go in here to the game. And the bar at the bottom always stays on screen. I haven't found a way to remove that. So here I can move forward, use my controller, and it works just as good as it does on the web. So that is how you can play Stadia on Samsung DeX on the next dock. One thing I use a ton on my phone and my Chromebook is Chrome Remote Desktop. So actually the best way to do this is to go to the website of Chrome Remote Desktop and then you have all the options here that I would have on my Chromebook. So here I'm able to choose what screen I want to look at and I can adjust and do everything that I would do on a Chromebook. So this is really useful. I do wish I had an option to make it full screen, but uh, Chrome Remote Desktop worked really well. Next, let's talk about browsing the web. So here we're gonna open Google Chrome. So the weird thing is, is this is still the phone version of Google Chrome. So you can see the interface just isn't meant to be on a big screen like this. So going here, you can see that I have these big different tabs. So that doesn't work really well. So one question I get a lot is, does it run full web pages? Well, it can. You do need to make sure that you go into the desktop site. So pretty much every website I went to that I needed it did let me use the desktop option and I was able to do everything I wanted to do, but sometimes you can't do like everything you would do on a full Chromebook, it just isn't possible. But one cool thing that you can do is use the Samsung internet browser. With this internet browser, you get a more formatted fit for the screen. So here you can see up at the top, I have these different tabs that I can navigate through. I can easily add tabs, I can save bookmarks. This has other uh, extensions that you can use in the Samsung internet browser. So there's really a lot that this browser offers over Chrome. Here you can see the tab selection. Sorry, my talking is off from the screen. I kind of had really bad audio there, but there you go. That is how you can enhance your web experience with the next doc using the Samsung internet browser. Okay, so now let's test putting in an SD card. So here I have my SD card. Clicks in just like that. And then we're going to head into the apps and go to the My Files application. So here we have our internal storage. Here we have SD card. So that's the internal SD card. And then here we have USB storage one. So it looks like this is the card that I just put in. Let's see. Yep, and it is now gone. So there you go, SD card works great. And it's really nice, you can just plug it in there instead of worrying about plugging it into your phone, maybe taking off your case and all that. So you can instantly load files on there and put them onto your phone really easily. Now let's talk about supported devices. So they do have a smartphones option on the website and you can see all the devices you could use. So you have the Galaxy S8s, the S9s, the Note 8, 9, 10, and then the Galaxy S10s as well as the Fold and the Galaxy S20, S20 Plus and S20 Ultra. Now those are the main phones that I've used Samsung DeX on. They all work really well. 
And then they also have the option for different Huawei phones. So you have the Mate 10, Mate 10 Pro, Mate 20, 20 Pro, 20 Pro X, Mate 30, P20, P20 Pro, P30, P30 Pro, and the Honor Note 10 and View 10. So lots of different options there for Huawei. Now their interface is a little bit different. I've never used that, but that is available. And then lastly, down here at the bottom, it does say that the LG G8 ThinQ and the LG V50 ThinQ do have some sort of desktop mode that will be coming soon or is available with the Android 10 update. So again, I have not used that, but it should be coming soon. But one of the great things about the next stock is that if your phone uh, updates or if you upgrade your phone, you will still be able to use this device with the new phone because it doesn't have a processor or anything. Your phone is what carries all the processing. The next dock is just what is able to show all that information on screen with a mouse and a keyboard, which have been around forever. So that is how you can use the next dock with many of the different smartphone devices that you may have. I do wanna show you a few other really neat things that you can use with Samsung Deck. So here, if I go into the apps menu and I go in here to Samsung Deck settings, under the mouse and trackpad option, I have an option right here that says float pointer to phone screen. So with this, it gives me the option to move my mouse over here onto my phone. So if you can see that my mouse is moving around, I can open up an application like that and I can navigate through, which is super cool to be able to use your mouse on both devices. So I could even swipe up here and go home and then if you do use that and you're over here on your phone, so let's say we open up Samsung Notes here and we wanna start typing in the notes. This is also a screen as well. So now I have a mouse and a keyboard on my phone as well as being able to use Samsung Dex at the same time. So I can have different applications open on Dex and then I can have apps open here on my phone. Now I do wanna mention if you try and open the same thing that's open on the phone, so let's say, I come in here to the phone and try and open up a gallery and it's open up on Samsung Dex. It will ask to restart that application so that I can then open that over here on my phone. So some apps might be able to have two instances, but for the most part, you can only have it open on one place or the other. And that is just a brief glimpse at the cool things that you can do with the Next Dock and Samsung Dex. Next, I'm going to test out using the Next Dock with a desktop PC. So I have a PC down here that I don't have any peripherals. So I don't have a monitor for, I don't have a keyboard, and I don't have a mouse. So the next dock would be a great option. I could just easily plug it in, use the computer with this, and then if I needed to take the computer home and use it somewhere else, I could do that as well. So the next dock is really a great option for this. Maybe you have some servers that you want, need to plug into, or um, here I don't have place for a monitor for this desktop. If I ever wanna use it, I can easily plug this in and get going. So here I have my HDMI cable plugged into the back that I'm using. So we're just going to plug that in here. And then next, all I have done is taken a USB-C and a USB-A cable, plugged the A side into the computer, and then here I'm going to plug in the USB-C into one of the USB-C slots over here. Let's power it on. And there you heard it connected, and here it's giving us the battery percent, so right now I have 69% on the next dock, but now I have full access to my computer, so I can use the touchpad here if I open up the web. So here I can use the touchpad to scroll through. If I want to use the keyboard, I can do that as well. And this does have the same problem I was having with Dex, where when I'm typing, I accidentally will touch the touchpad. Again, function escape, and the touchpad is now off. And I'll just take my mouse and plug it into the USB over here on the side. And now we have full access to my PC. I don't need anything else. Everything is right here with the HDMI cable and the USB-C cable and my mouse. So there you go. Really great setup. Now, one other thing is I was able to even plug in the SD card and it still works. So right here, 
I have access to that micro SD card that's in the next dock. So you could use this to plug in flash drives or whatever else you need. And you have everything here within the next dock, um, all the different functions and volume keys and everything. So let me play again some sound um, right now. You can come down here and switch it to be playing through the next dock or through the computer speakers, whatever you have. Talk about the new way to unlock your phone through the with the release of the new Samsung Galaxy S10s, I've been asked many times if it's worth the upgrade from other Samsung Galaxy devices. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you everything that's new that can only... So there you have the speaker options to come out from here, or you can choose a speaker that's connected to your desktop. And then you have the volume control on the next dock, as well as the volume control right here on the PC as well. So everything else pretty much operates as normal. Uh, the next dock key that acts as your Windows key. And I'm very impressed with this. You can use this as your full PC, no problem. Screen quality is really great. So I think this is really another great way in which you can use the next dock with a desktop and you have everything you need all in one device. After using this setup for over a week, I can say that the next dock 2 is by far my favorite Samsung DeX experience. It's just so nice that I plug in my phone and I instantly have access to everything. I don't need to go and find a keyboard or all these different things or plug in the monitor. It's very portable and easy to use. And all I really need is this one cable for my phone and I'm ready to go. Now I will say the one issue I did have is the touchpad. It's just not as nice and high quality as something you would find on a Chromebook or other devices. Sometimes it's too sensitive. When I try and click, it ends up moving the mouse or the click buttons just aren't very great. So I'm just really glad that Samsung DeX can use anything. So here my Bluetooth mouse solved all of those problems, or you can just get a USB mouse and plug it in. And then it's not a ton of things you're carrying around. It's just an extra mouse and it, it solves so many different problems. So if you do have any further questions about using the next dock 2 with Samsung DeX, please let me know in the comments below if I need to do a follow up video on some of these features more in depth. I'd love to do that for you guys. So if you wanna pick one up, make sure you check out the link in the description below. And if you wanna see more videos I've made about ways you can use Samsung DeX, make sure you check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.